It's a chilly 11 degrees night and according to the weather app, it feels like 9 degrees. So in the previous video, I asked your opinion on whether or not I should chop or wait until spring. And I think the vote is unanimous. The tribe has spoken. So I'd like to thank everyone for their input and in particular I'd like to thank Patricia Morgan, Susie Pie 11 Erica Bunny, Wolfboro Hoops, Given to Grow, and on Facebook, Marik Concepcion, Wuching Kanasai, and Chris Ash. Thank you for... You didn't convince me because I'm already convinced. I wanted to chop. I guess I just... I just wanted to check and see if people think I'm crazy for doing this now. I think it's not too late. Probably not too late to do this now. Well, the temperatures had started to go down. We are still getting warm days. In fact, earlier today, I think it was 23, 25 degrees. So, that's still pretty warm. And I guess as long as it doesn't consistently go below 15 degrees during the day, then I should be fine. And according to the forecast again, I should have at least uh, a week, hopefully a bit over a week, with days over 20 degrees. And to me, that should be enough. So I guess we should just wait for the morning. It's a beautiful morning and we're going to the markets. Hi! So I picked up three plants from the markets and these are these three. The first one is an Ichiberia of some sort. I'm not sure which type this is but I'll find out once it colors up or maybe as it grows older. The second one is this basket of Sidum Aurora. It's a pale version of the Rubrotinctum, the jelly beans. And lastly, I found a cheap spiral aloe. Can't be happier. Now we go back to gardening mode. I think the best time to do this was last month, but I've been so busy with other stuff, I was not able to find the time to do it. But given the weather that we have right now, it seems to me that it's still a good time to do it. It's not too late. I've been thinking about it a lot, offline and online. And of course you know that I posted a video about it, asking, asking your opinions. And I agree with the consensus, I am definitely going to chop. I guess I was just looking for affirmation or confirmation. Just to see that I was not out of my mind. More, more, more. Right, Jackie. Now, I'm no stranger to head chops. I've been doing this a lot before, especially in the warmer months, but I was initially apprehensive because it was too cold last week, and then in the past few days we had dips well below 10 degrees Celsius. I was concerned that maybe this would be enough to trigger dormancy, but it looks like we're getting warmer days again, at least temporarily, and I hope this is enough for them to start growing roots, you know, once I do the chops now. And according to the forecast, I might be getting at least a week or so of nice weather where the day, the daytime temperatures would be over 20 degrees. And I think that would be enough. Of course, there's some caveats. I'm not going to chop all of them. I'm just going to chop those that are in danger of falling over. And that's only a subset of all my leggy echeverias. Let me go show you. Now here's a good example. This big red right here is leaning forward and I need to chop it, you know, reset it because otherwise it's pushing into these bumps. You know, when, when echeverias push against each other, it's not going to be pretty because they're going to force or change the growth habit of the other plant. 
and it's going to be a chain reaction because when you push on something, when you push on a plant, the, the stem would be bending unnecessarily and that causes part of the stem to, to break or to rot or you know, undue trauma. That's never a good thing. Apart from the big red over there, I'm going to do this early right as well. I'm still trying to decide whether I should do this caranculata, but maybe not. And there's one other thing that I have to do. Let me show you. I'm doing this in both gem as well. As you see, it's starting to bend now. And I don't like it when they bend. And now I need to grab my weapon. So this is what I normally use. This is just a regular cleaver. Is this a cleaver? Well, this used to be in the kitchen, but I've been using it in the garden so much, so it has become a dedicated garden implement for me now. You could just use any knife that you have, any cutting tool, anything that you're comfortable with, pretty much anything that could cut. And in my case, I just make sure it's clean and dry. I don't necessarily have to go as far as sterilizing it. You could do so if you want to be absolutely safe, absolutely sure. It's just that I'm too lazy to go that route. I just have to make sure that it's clean and dry after each chop. That way no microbes would be getting onto the plant. But since I, I'm not going to water the plant anyway for the first few days, for the first week, then it's not really going to matter, at least in my climate and in my experience. But if it's going to be your first time, better be safe than sorry and chop with a clean instrument. I'm pretty much good to go. I just need to pull out the plants that I'll be working on. So let's go do that now. First up is this embossed gem. It's in a pot so it's going to be a simple matter pulling it out. And just so this doesn't collapse, I'm going to place an empty pot, an empty bowl, just to fill the gap. like I'm about ready to chop. So here's the plan and I'm going to walk you through where I'm going to chop it. Now, in most of the guides that you would see online about how to chop succulents, there are five general areas where you could cut and each one has its pros and cons. So I'm going to walk you through each one. I've already explained this in a video about head propagation and I'll link it in the top right corner. But a quick recap here is in order. So as you can see, this is an embossed gem and it's quite leggy now. It has a pop growing from the side which is good and I want it to stay that way. So let's start with the tip. You could cut or just pinch out the tip removing the growing point and by doing that, you're removing the apical meristem, which is the growing point at the very tip of this stem. And by doing that, you're removing the dominance of the apical meristem, or the apical dominance, which, which means that the lateral meristems, or the growing points along the stem, would be activated. With the apical meristem gone, 
there would be a greater likelihood of pops growing from the sides. This first method of pinching out the apical meristem means that you're going to grow a lot of pops, but you're going to sacrifice the entire plant because this plant would not grow anymore. You're just forcing it to grow pops. This is perfectly fine if your goal is to propagate and you don't mind losing the parent plant. And this is what people usually do with their duplicates. The second point would be somewhere above the lowest set of leaves. So maybe somewhere here. And doing it that way means that you have a small rosette to work with. And you can allow it to grow roots and you still have part of the main plant intact. Apart from the rosette, you still have a lot of the remaining stump which means that there's still lots of chances for pops. Just remove the flower stalk. So the third section is cutting right below the lowest leaves. So right flush onto this part of the stem. You're still going to end up chopping at the green part of the stem, which means that there's still some vigorous growth that's going to happen. By chopping right here, you're going to save the whole rosette the large rosette which means that if you're working on a single specimen this technique is pretty nifty if you only have one of the specimen and you want to keep it large but at the same time you would want to propagate it so this still leaves you with a lot of stem to work with still lots of chances to get pops but unlike the first two types of cuts you get to keep the whole rosette now the next two points are somewhere down along the stem so one would be here, somewhere in the middle, and one would be right at the very base. And these two are not really advisable because by chopping further away from the rosette, it means that you're going to chop the old parts of the stem which, where it's starting to get woody. And at that point, the, the, there would be a lot less vigor in the growth, which means that you're just basically wasting a plant. So the higher you chop, the better because it's going to grow roots a lot faster that way. And you would also get the most number of pops. If you chop way too low, then there's no chance of growing pops because these are already old. And at the same time, it will take a lot longer for this to root. And overall, the rosette is going to be weak. I generally prefer doing either this part here or below the rosette. And in this case, I'm going to do below the rosette. So I want to keep the size of this rosette. And now that I walk you through my choice for this plant, I'm going to start doing the chop. It looks like the plant is at an awkward position for me to work in, so I'll just probably be doing this squatting. Let's see how it goes. Alright, we got the whole rosette intact and I'm going to let this dry as well as this one. So I'm going to keep them in a cool dry place away from direct sunlight and away from uh, a humid, humid source which means the rain. But I'll think about that later. I'll have to go do the other chops now. Stay there for now. Now it's time to get the rest of the planks. The others are still in the ground so I have to pull them out now. Single
was originally thinking of putting another plant here but I quite like the spacing of this five so I'm going to leave it as is. Seconds are like this, ain't that upset? So why do I bother? But nothing can compete with the way it hurts when they say you recover. The soil in this stump is too, I don't know, compact. So I'll have to break it up a bit. This is just to ensure that it has the proper drainage. So I wouldn't want it to be waterlogged, especially now that we're heading into winter. I just have to loosen it up a bit. Now if you remember how I picked which ones to chop in the first place, it was because they were starting to fall over and I feel like I have to prevent the others from doing so because while they are still standing upright, they are in danger of falling over because of all of their flower stalks. So in addition to chopping off the heads, I'm going to chop off all of the flower stalks on my echeverias. Since my echeverias are going dormant in winter, and that's only a couple months away, I want them to save their energy for the next growing season in spring. By removing all of their flower stalks, I'm allowing them to take it easy by not having to spend more energy into seed production, because that's what they do with the flower stalks. With the flower stalks gone, all they have to focus on would be their own growth, and in the case of the head chops, just the roots. And after that, they could be well on their way, just relaxing and preparing for the next spring and considering all the things I've let them go through they deserve a break so I guess it's time to get rid of the stalks and while at it I'm going to pluck all of the leaves because we wouldn't want them to go to waste we could still use them for propagation Look at these ones, they haven't been getting enough sunlight so they were stretching for it, looking for sun and they are mostly green now. They should be looking the same as this ones because they are the same plant. So hopefully now that I've cleared out the space around them, they would be getting access to more sun and they would be going back to the color that they're supposed to be. You know about those pig's ears? Maybe it's a better idea to just get rid of all of them. I still have those couple of planter stands we bought from Aldi. I need to set them up now and I could use them for some of the stumps.
I need to find a spot where they won't likely be hit by water or direct sunlight and I was thinking that maybe front of this shelf this might be enough so for now this one will go here I just have to be careful about watering these plants just so it won't drip over here it's too big <laughs> I might just use them I might just put them here instead this makes more sense them here for now because I don't want them to be accidentally watered but maybe in several days or a week when I'm sure that the ends have calloused over I would need to move them into somewhere where they can get more sun that way they could still do their nor normal photosynthesis I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons that's Oscarino, Julie Seals, Nakui, Camille Narvaez, Corinne Noti as well as the rest of them thank you so much for your support I can't wait to finish cleaning up the Patreon shrine along the fence. And speaking of cleaning up, my wife told me to take out the laundry. I'd better do that before she gets mad at me. <laughs> back to my work got two tubs of cuttings here this ones are from the Crashula andulatifolia the ripple jade and I'm just going to stick this directly in the soil they will root that way as for these I'm going to place them in a planter or maybe I don't know some parts of the landscape I'm not yet sure but but for now since I'm not yet sure what I want to do with them I'm just going to stick them in the planter that's our that's already in the shade just so they would continue growing. I might be able to use them in other landscapes, but until then, until I decide where I want to use them, they just have to be on standby. There's also the matter of all these flower stalks. What I'm going to do is to pluck all of the leaves and just place them in the shade in my propagation station. Who knows, they might take. Not all of them will take, but it's still a lot of leaves. Damn, I need such a 
weg. For the next episode, I'm thinking that I could do the garden update since it's the last Monday of the month already. So I better sneak that in before April goes away. Now that we're on the topic of chopping, I'd like to point you to my buddy Steve. He runs a cooking show and he does things so beautifully. Here's some of his work. If you like what you saw, make sure to subscribe to his channel, not another cooking show. And like the title states, it's definitely not your regular cooking show. It's one of the very few cooking shows that I watch, because man, I love all of those cinematics. So go ahead and subscribe to Steve, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! In keeping with the theme, I also had my hair chopped, and apart from that, I'm about to hit the render button.